Okay, hey, good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is June 24th, 2023. And I had a dream last night I want to share with you guys. I feel it's extremely encouraging. And I'm not 100% sure on the meaning, so I'm going to go ahead and share it. Ask you guys to please pray as always. Pray for discernment and take everything that I say to the Lord. Okay, so in this dream last night, I had prayed last night. I think many of us feel the same way that I just uh, asked the Lord. I said, I don't feel like I'm, I'm doing enough for you. You know, I, I haven't felt led to do videos or anything like that. And uh, so anyways, he gave me a dream. And in this dream, first thing was, is I was uh, in front of me was like a store or maybe a storage. But it was um, held flower. And... I was made to know in this dream that what I was being shown was like a comparison. And I was shown that when the flower is gone, then we would be going home. That was, this is, that would be the end, you know? So as I sat outside the store, a woman came and sat beside me and she held a bowl, just like the one you're seeing in front of you with a flower in it. And it was approximately the same size. You know, it was a little bit bigger than a cereal bowl. And uh, it was, the flowers kind of heaped up like that. Only the flower looked um, clay colored almost. But anyways, uh, which could just mean like it could have been maybe wheat flour or, or something like that. But I was told that this size of the bowl in front of me was all that was left. And I was really shocked because I was like, oh my gosh, if that's all the flour that's left, I mean, we don't have a lot of time left. But that's exactly what I was shown, okay? Again, I was shown that, or made to know that the flower was symbolic, that of when it was gone, then our time here is done. And at that point, I didn't know how much flower was left until the woman came out and sat beside me. And even she kind of raised her eyebrows at me, like, this is all that's left. And it was this bowl of flour. That was all that was left. So I did a little research this morning, and I found in, um, cause I was thinking, okay, well, what could the flower be symbolic of? You know, God speaks in riddles. He, uh, you know, he makes us, uh, seek him to get answers, you know, and we need to pray. So I found in Leviticus 5, 11 through 13, it says flower was offered by the poor as a sin offering. I was like, wow. Okay. So I was talking to my husband about it. I was like, all right, let's talk this out. So we were uh, talking about the, the symbolism of the flower and that it was used as a sin offering. And he goes, <laughs> he says to me, it's almost like um, when Joe comes to Christ, Jesus uses the flower as Joe's sin offering. So this could be symbolic of sin offerings that are still left, you know, this is what's left in the bowl. So it could represent or be symbolic of the people out there that have still yet to come to Christ. Okay, possibly. Um, let's see. I know that in Leviticus, it said that they offered or they, um, their sin offering was a 10th of an ephah. So an ephah is roughly 35 liters. Uh, a 10th of a, an ephah for sin offering was usually around three and a half to four cups of flour, which makes sense because that's what they used the flour to bake with and, and things of that, of that nature. Okay, so this next scene I saw may give us a little bit more uh, of an answer to this puzzle. And in the next scene, I was shown a list of names, like on just on a notebook paper. On each line were three names. And what I was shown was, you know, three different names. And what I was told was Joe brought, well, I'm just using an example here. So the first name, say it was Joe. Joe brought Sam to Christ through maybe just... Uh, uh, through his actions, through his love, through his teaching, whatever. And then Sam brought John to Christ. So the Lord was showing me how it's a chain reaction. That even though we may not feel like we're doing anything specifically for the Lord, the bigger picture is that chain reaction. So say if you were, you know, you, you weren't trying to pound something into somebody's head, but you were living a life for Christ or you were forgiving to someone and and you just 
uh, being that example, you inspired that person to search out Christ, who then became saved. And then maybe their actions or whatever, or maybe they a word they may say or, or prayer brought the other person to Christ. So it's a chain reaction. So I saw a list of names. I don't know. Maybe there's seven or eight lines on this paper, and each had three names. So it was just showing this chain reaction that what we do, it does matter. Okay, we may not, it doesn't mean we have to go out and pound the pulpit. It doesn't mean that, you know, we, we have to be radical. It's our, it's the love. My husband pounds us into our heads every, <laughs> every Bible study because this is what the Lord put on him. The Lord gave him a vision years ago, and he said to him, Brian, love is your weapon. He said, my job is to defeat Satan. Your job is to love. Love, love, love. So Brian's always preaching that to us. That, because um, sometimes people will be like, well, what's a sin? Or am I sinning? And, God, and Brian will say, well, did you love your neighbor? You know, that's what, it, that's what it's talking about. It's like, are you loving your neighbor? Because God says you're not loving him if you're not loving your neighbor. It's all about love and how powerful love is and that love is our weapon. So this is just, this is what, this is Brian's um, mission, okay, until we go, go home, is the importance of love. And so this chain reaction, it doesn't have to be some earth-breaking thing that you do. It can just simply be smiling at somebody. And if they get angry with you, it's simply saying, it's okay. You have nothing to worry about. There's nothing to forgive. It's okay. I love you. It's things like that. Because love is our weapon. That love is going to make that person say, wow, where does she get that from? Why is she, how can she do that? And then that's when that person can say, it's because of Christ. Jesus has forgiven me when I didn't deserve to be forgiven. So I have no right to to judge somebody else uh, or anything like that because that's that's what's being a hypocrite and we all struggle with that because it's our flesh i struggle with my flesh we all struggle with it that's you know and jesus knows that that's why we are to walk in the spirit we are to work on letting our spirit dominate our flesh because our flesh wants what it wants it wants to be lazy it wants to be selfish it wants to uh, repay evil for evil. But these are the things that Jesus says we're not to do. So I am praying that we can all move forward to be a part of this chain, you know? And it's so easy. It's, you know, Jesus loves us so much and he forgave us and we didn't deserve to be forgiven. You know, we really don't. But he loves us so much that he died for us. And I believe this flower is exactly what what I looked up today. It's a it's symbolic of a sin offering, and there's not much left in this bowl. It was just one bowl of flour left. Now maybe this is personally for me. It very well could be. Maybe this is a few more people that I have yet to maybe, um, you know, by the grace of God bring to Christ, or, or maybe it's symbolic of each one of us, or maybe that's simply all we have left. I don't know for sure, but I just know that this dream is extremely encouraging. I believe the Lord has definitely um, led me to share that this morning, you know, because like I said, I've been going through a, a season where I just haven't felt led to do any dreams, and I, I think I've let my flesh get in the way because I think after a while you get tired of people mocking you and making fun of your weight, instead of listening to what you have to say, they make fun. And I think I was just getting to a point where it's like, well, all right, well, maybe, maybe I am misunderstanding. Maybe I'm not doing something right. Maybe I just need to back off or sometimes we just get tired. But it's like, I don't know. I don't even know what I was going to say. I just know that I'm not going to do that anymore. And when God shows me stuff, I'm just going to explain it. If if I don't understand it, you know what? It's okay. Because maybe I'm not supposed to maybe understand. Maybe somebody, one of you guys will understand it. I just know that from here on out, I, I will continue 
Um, it was a season I went through and I'm just going to continue to go ahead and, and share because you know what? I believe, I believe these are from God and I believe that my heart is in the right place. And so I just want to encourage you guys with this and, and also, you know, that you guys probably know from watching this that we are very close. We don't have a lot of time left and Yesterday, not yet, yeah, the night before I did have something that I saw before I woke up. But I'm going to go ahead and share that too in case this may help somebody. Uh, right before I woke up, I saw uh, like a vision. And uh, I saw a big, looked like a, a billboard sign. The whole sign was black. And in the middle was written NYC, you know, for New York City. On each side of the New York City, you know, the NYC was... Um, fire so uh, i saw like i said the billboard was black and then it kind of blended into orange and then fire on the sides it said new york city in the middle and under it i saw the word june um, maybe it's this month maybe it's next year i don't know and so i just wanted to give that heads up because i f i feel like if i don't and 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 this may be this may be something that that one person was searching for like Sometimes we pray, you know, God, do you want us to go or do you want us to stay? And they're looking for that little bit of confirmation. And maybe that's, this is what that little bit of confirmation will be for one person. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe it's next year. But you know what? I don't want to take any chances on it. So I'm sharing that. So I felt like it was a warning for New York City. Absolutely. Um, it felt more to me like... Um, the feeling I got over it was more like an explosion or, or a bomb. Something exploding is what I was feeling when I saw this. Not so much a fire. Of course, the fire will come from uh, an explosion, but that was just the feeling I was getting. So I, I just want to share that also. So if anybody is living in New York City or around that area, or, uh, the best thing I can say to you, uh, please just pray. Ask God. Say, is what she saw right? Or just simply say, Lord, I'm not sure what to do. Should I stay or go? Uh, I always go to God. I may get impatient sometimes, and I may not like his answers, but I always I always go to God and ask him first. Even when I go to the doctor, I just, he's my father. And so I don't just, he's not my father, just a name. He's truly my father. So I go to him for everything. Lord, what do you, you know, show me. Do you do you want me to go here? Um, this is the stuff I pray for every day. Open and shut the doors because I want God's will in my life. Because he knows what's best for me. You know, there's many times that I've gotten up and we were going to go somewhere and then he closes the door. And I don't get upset because it's like Brian and I will, it's funny because we'll look at each other at the same time and say, well, there's a reason we weren't supposed to go. You know, and that's that's how we roll, so to speak. So, anyways, I'm going to let go. This is getting a little bit long. I just want to go ahead and pray for each and every one of you guys. We really are at the end of the end. So, I just lift everybody up here, or up to, in your families. I lift you all up to Christ. Uh, everyone that's listening to this, I pray for each and every one of you. I pray for the salvation of every soul. I truly do. While there's still time, you guys, please reach out to the Lord. If you're not sure, just reach out to him and ask him. It never hurts to ask, and he will answer you. So I do love you guys. Thanks for listening, and again, please just pray over this. Okay, in Jesus' name, amen.